Why didn't they just give you the right scoop size? It's Michelle from Lab Muffin Beauty Science here, chemistry PhD and skincare nerd. The Ordinary are a skincare brand that's famous for their giant range of budget-friendly, simple, mostly active ingredient-focused products. And I like a lot of Ordinary products, so I've talked before about the Squalane Cleanser, the Natural Moisturizing Factors Cream, and the 7% Glycolic Acid Toning Solution. They've recently launched 100% Niacinamide Powder, and they've had their 100% L-Ascorbic Acid Powder for a while. And today I'm going to be telling you why I don't recommend them. If you like this sort of nerdy beauty content, click the thumbs up, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. So overall, I really like Decium and The Ordinary. I like a lot of their products. I like a lot of Ordinary products. I also like a lot of Neod products and Hylamide products. And I really appreciate the fact that Decium and The Ordinary in general are really emphasizing understanding the science behind the ingredients you're using. But their powders are something that I've never really gotten on board with. So this is the 100% niacinamide powder, which is new, and the older 100% L-ascorbic acid powder. These are both PR samples, and hopefully I don't get blacklisted for being honest because that has happened before. Anyway, let's talk about them now. So firstly with formulation, The Ordinary has always put out products that have minimal formulation. This drastically cuts down product development and production costs, which is a large part of why their products are so cheap. So for simpler products that are basically just the active ingredient dissolved in the solution and then adjusted to the right pH, that is probably fine. So these are things like simple hydroxy acid solutions. With more complex products like emulsions and things with unstable actors and actors that are just harder to get into your skin, then having a bit more formulation is probably going to make sure that that product actually works so that those active ingredients actually get into your skin where they're needed and do what they're meant to do. And so with those ones, I think it's a little bit more risky to use an ordinary product. I guess it's not really risky, it's just it might not work. But it's still really accessible and really cheap, and so the fact that it's not working as well as it could is generally not a huge issue for people who are going to the ordinary to just experiment with different products, which I think is great. With the powders, obviously there's zero formulation, which means that it's even more questionable whether or not they'll work, which I can mostly forgive because there are a lot of brands out there, including really sciencey brands, that don't test their products on skin. For the niacinamide powder, the Ordinary recommend that you mix it with a water-based product that's between pH 5.1 and 7.0. Now, I really doubt that people are going to be measuring the pH of what they're mixing it with, but The Ordinary does have a list of their own serums that they recommend mixing it with. So again, I don't think this is a huge problem, but I do think there is a bigger problem of safety here. I think there's a bit of a trend in skincare to be chasing higher and higher percentages. This ties in with a lot of other ideas that you hear a lot about in skincare. So the idea that if you have a low percentage of actives, then your product is useless, that you need to look for products that have actives in the top five ingredients, that honest skincare brands will give you the percentages of every single ingredient in their product. A lot of brands have encouraged this or accidentally encouraged this, including The Ordinary, by listing their percentages on their products really clearly without talking more about how that isn't the be all and end all of whether or not a skincare product's good. In some cases, they also use much, much higher percentages than their competitors and use this as a selling point. But high percentages aren't necessary, and a lot of the time putting a higher percentage than you're meant to in a product is actually bad formulating practice. If you buy cosmetic ingredients from a manufacturer, then on their product data sheet they usually tell you the recommended percentages for a particular ingredient. So with niacinamide, for example, it's usually recommended at 0.5 to 5%. With L-ascorbic acid, it's recommended at 5 to 15%. The reason there's an upper limit on these percentages isn't because they're trying to trick you and get more money out of you. Because if you think about it, the ingredient suppliers are actually going to make more money and sell more product if they get cosmetic formulators to use more of their active ingredients. The reason is that scientific studies have already found really good effects at these levels, and they haven't actually found better effects at higher levels. The higher levels have never been used in scientific studies. There's no real reason to use them if you're looking for skin brightening because it actually hasn't been tested. And in general, if you have a higher percentage, the more likely it is you'll have side effects. 
So the likely irritation and stress to your skin probably isn't worth it for that theoretical extra benefit. So you might be gaining this much irritation and only this much extra effect or even no extra effect. An analogy is food, so there's going to be a lot of food analogies here because I really like food. So pepper, for example, if you like pepper, a bit of pepper in your food is good. Maybe a bit more pepper is even better. But at some point there is just going to be too much pepper. So given these recommended percentages, you'll notice that a lot of the time in skincare products you get a higher percentage than is recommended. On the one hand this is good because if you have like a not very well formulated product, then that high percentage means that more of it is likely to get into your skin, so the same amount as if you had a well formulated product at a lower percentage. If it's an ingredient that's a bit unstable, then maybe that also means that some of it will degrade before it gets to you and so you're left with the amount that you actually wanted. So again, this might compensate for a bad formulation. But on the other hand, there is an upper recommended percentage for a good reason. Firstly, it's the efficacy studies, and secondly, it's the side effects, so things like irritation and toxicology. So you'll often hear from cosmetic science mythbusters like me and Jen of the EcoWell that ingredients are safe in products at the concentrations they're used. The important part here is at the concentrations used in beauty products. If there's too much, it might not actually be fine. So toxicologists have analysed the safety of these ingredients based on the amounts that are commonly used in products. If you have 75% of something rather than the recommended 5%, then it might not be fine anymore. So for example, the Cosmetic Ingredient Review, which is an organisation that does a lot of this toxicology testing and assessing of ingredients, has this to say about niacinamide. Based on the available data, the CIR expert panel concludes that niacinamide and niacin are safe in the current practices of use and concentration in cosmetic products. So the highest concentration products that they looked at in their review was actually only 3%. This was done in 2001 when niacinamide wasn't such a hot ingredient. For ascorbic acid, the highest concentration was 10% that they looked at, and they have a really similar statement as well. Based on the available data contained in this report, the CIR expert panel concludes that L-ascorbic acid is safe as used in cosmetic products. So these safety reviews usually give a really wide margin of error for long-term health effects, so things like cancer and reproductive problems. So that means if you're using multiple products with 5% niacinamide or 10% L-ascorbic acid and you're using them multiple times a day, you're probably not going to be risking any of these. There's also the fact that these two particular ingredients are vitamins that humans have been using and eating for as long as humans have been around. But one of the side effects that can happen if you have a little bit more of an ingredient than you should is irritation. So in these safety assessments, the highest concentrations that they tested for irritancy was 20% for niacinamide and 10% for L-ascorbic acid. And for these ingredients, most of the studies that found beneficial effects were done at less than 5% niacinamide and less than 10% L-ascorbic acid. So there's no reliable evidence that having a higher concentration than these will actually give more benefits. And there's actually a study that suggests that going higher than 20% L-ascorbic acid doesn't give you more benefits but will increase irritation. Unfortunately for The Ordinary's products, there's not much guidance that they give to give you 5% niacinamide or 10% L-ascorbic acid. And in fact, it's like so vague, they don't even emphasize any of the importance of this maths. So for the L-ascorbic acid, they say to mix a small amount, and for the niacinamide, they say mix a quarter scoop. So this guidance is my biggest issue with these powders. My overall complaint is that you can't measure a tiny amount of a powder accurately at home. So the small amount that you're meant to use of the ascorbic acid is just so incredibly vague. If you ask five different people to show you what they think a small amount of a powder is, they're going to show you five wildly different amounts. So with the niacinamide, the guidance is a little bit better. They tell you to use a quarter scoop and they give you the scoop with the product, but there's still a ton of problems with this. So firstly, a scoop is what we call a volumetric measurement, so you're seeing how much stuff you can cram into a particular volume. Volumetric measurements of items are never really that reliable. So we know this from everyday life, so if you go and get a box of salad, some places will pack it full of salad, and some places will give you like a couple of leaves that expand to fill the whole container. And so you get wildly different amounts of salad, you get very different amounts of fullness from that salad, even though both are a box. Even when it's something relatively solid, like let's say strawberries, you still get a really wide range of amounts because you can have large strawberries, you can chop them up into finely diced strawberries, and you can fit a lot more of that finely diced strawberry into that cup. 
even with something like a powder where the range of sizes is pretty small, you can still get things like a tightly packed cup of flour versus a loosely packed cup of flour. So even with this sort of powder where it looks like it's all the same size, if you zoom in, there's actually a whole bunch of different sizes. So if you have a jar of powder with different sizes of powder, which they almost always have, then what's going to happen is that the bigger particles tend to stay up the top and the smaller particles filter down to the bottom. And so when you're up the top, you're scooping up bigger particles, which means you get less mass in your scoop. When you get down to the bottom, then you end up with a more tightly packed powder. And so you end up with a greater percentage. And with things like skincare, that percentage is based on mass, not on volume. So it's not like 5% is one scoop per 20 scoops. It is one mass per 20 masses. And so that's going to make a difference. Now in my DIY vitamin C recipe, I did give a volumetric measurement as an approximation. And that's because I realized that not everyone has scales at home. And so giving an approximate volumetric measurement is probably better than nothing, better than add a small amount anyway. There's also a really wide range of l acid concentrations that are both safe and effective. So between five and 20%, if you aim for 10%, that means you have a 100% leeway either way. And so if you're measuring a large amount, like a whole, teaspoon of powder, then you have a lot of leeway. It's really hard to be out by 100%. And that's one of my biggest issues with these powders. They recommend that you do it per dose. So each time you put it on your face, you measure out the small amount. With my DIY serum, you are making 20 mils at a time. And so when you're measuring a larger amount, you have a smaller percentage error. And this is the reason I've never recommended making up your vitamin C per dose. So what I mean by percentage error is, let's say you're trying to make a 10% vitamin C serum to put on your face. If you're making 20 mils of serum, you need to measure out two grams of powder. If you accidentally add an extra five milligrams, so this is like a match head size amount, then it isn't a big issue. If you've recalculated, that means you've accidentally made a 10.025% serum, which is not a big deal. A lot of commercial l acid serums probably regularly accidentally add this much extra. But if you're mixing a single dose of serum, let's say about 0.2 mils, which is how much I use, you're going to need two milligrams of l acid. Now this time, if you accidentally add an extra five milligrams, you aren't gonna be 0.025% out. You are 25% out. So this is what I mean by a larger percentage error. You are using way more concentrated stuff than you should be. This is higher than any commercial vitamin C serum. You are using a product that's three and a half times stronger than you wanted. One of the things that really annoys me about the new niacinamide powder is that they recommend that you use a quarter scoop of the included scoop. Why didn't they just give you the right scoop size? There is like a big mathematical problem with this sort of hemisphere scoop, and that is a quarter scoop is not what you expect. So you'd think a quarter scoop is like a quarter of the way up the spoon. It's actually closer to a third of the way up the spoon. And so it's really hard to eyeball that. Like with a circle, circles are smaller at the bottom. With a sphere, it is like a circle, but worse. It's like a circle, like a whole bunch of times. There's also the fact that you're not gonna be scooping the powder perfectly horizontally like that or like that, you're probably gonna be scooping it diagonally. And so that makes it even harder to eyeball how much you need. So I don't know why they didn't give the right scoop size. I'm guessing it's something to do with not being able to find the right scoop size, um, some sort of supply issue. If I was a more cynical person, I might even suggest that it's because that way they can blame the customer if they have any like real irritation issues and so they can spread some of that negligence. But yeah, I don't know, it's the wrong scoop size and that's really annoying. So on top of the wildly variable amounts of L-ascorbic acid and niacinamide that you're putting on your face, there's also the issue of pH. For niacinamide, it's not as bad. Niacinamide is mostly pH neutral, and so you're not gonna get any sort of safety issue. L-ascorbic acid is an acid, and so that means when you put it into any water-based solution, it's going to donate extra H plus into the solution, and that's what burns your face off. With my DIY serum, you adjust the pH back up to a safe level using baking soda. That means you get a nice 3 to 3.5, which is still effective without being actually dangerous. There's no neutralization step here. So if you have a 10% solution, that could go down to pH 2. If you have a higher percentage, like you might accidentally do with your small amount and your match head size, that completely ruins your concentration, then you might have an even lower pH. That is like not good. That is like the apple cider vinegar burn your face off territory. 
So I don't really like doing highly negative reviews of products because I think that in general with most products, someone out there will enjoy it. There will be a place for it somewhere. And like I said, I like a lot of Desian products. I think a lot of them are really good. A lot of them work really well for my skin and they're so budget friendly that it's really accessible for everyone. But in this case, I really think there is a clear safety issue with these products and how they tell you to use these products. There are some very good reasons why other brands haven't done this before, even though it's so easy to do to just like chuck raw materials into a jar and sell it on. And it's really profitable as well. This vid is probably just my inner cheap ass, but the l ascorbic acid powder isn't even good value. You can get 250 grams from iHerb for $9.90, and so if you scoop out the same amount in this jar, this would be 80 cents worth. So I think there's a lot of science washing, a lot of like science theater going on with this product, and I think it's important for people who are thinking of buying this product to know why having your product and then mixing things into it and sort of like playing chemists without proper scales, without proper pH testing, might not be the best idea. It's also a bit frustrating to see people get so excited about this product, even though every cosmetic chemist I've talked to has been like, this is an awful idea. I wouldn't even trust myself to do this at home, let alone someone who doesn't know how to do the right calculations, doesn't know how to do the right procedures. And at the same time, people are criticizing properly formulated products for being unsafe when they use any of those buzzy so-called toxic ingredients. So things like alcohol, parabens, fragrance, and dyes, even though they're all included at low enough concentrations to be considered safe, according to lots of actual toxicological calculations and considerations. There's just so much science behind those products showing that they are safe. Whereas with these ones, every scientist I've talked to has been like, no. So I guess the main message is marketing is something that we have to be aware of and it comes from both brands that are natural, organic and clean and no toxins, as well as from the more sciencey brands as well. Anyway, leave me a comment letting me know what you think about this issue. If you liked it, click the like, subscribe. You can also check out my Instagram and check out my blog for more nerdy beauty talk. See you next time.